Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you for this introduction, Urs, and for the warm welcome. Dear family, friends, alumni, staff, and faculty, it is my pleasure to welcome you to the graduation ceremony for the MBA class of 2022 December edition Singapore. Welcome. I also want to welcome our graduation speaker, Roland Kruger, CEO of Dyson and MBA 98J. It is so nice of uh, Ors that he's mentioning only the outstanding teacher awards and all these things. Roland was in my second class when I got the lowest rating ever. So <laughs> we'll see what he'll mention about that. But of course, especially I want to welcome all of you, our graduates. For me and for Ors, it's a very special moment because in 2013, December, was our first graduation ceremony of the D class, and this is the 10th one and our last one. So I'm really pleased to have you here today and to be with you in this ceremony. The most important thing I want to say is that today is the beginning and not the end of your relationship with INSEAD, because you are the INSEAD of the future. So I want first to talk a little bit about INSEAD for the benefit, of course, of our guests so that they know where you spend these 12 months and how you'll be connecting in the future. INSEAD is a standalone independent business school that started in 1959 in Fontainebleau, in the Chateau of Fontainebleau, by a professor from Harvard Business School, Georges Dorio. Georges Dorio is, uh, is French by origin, but he was teaching at Harvard and he wanted to create something in Europe. But the most important thing that Georges Doria wanted to do is not only to bring management education to Europe, he wanted to create a place where the Germans, the French, the Italians, the Spaniards, the Brits will get together and instead of fighting with each other, which they have been doing successfully for many centuries, they will actually get together, build businesses together and promote peace and prosperity by being together and by working together. So from day one, our mission was very different from just let's educate some people in the art or science of management. The next 60 plus years have been very successful for the school from the only 53 students without a campus in a small room in the Chateau Fontainebleau. Today, we're the truly global business school with three campuses in Fontainebleau, Singapore, Abu Dhabi, and a hub in San Francisco. A lot has happened in the last 60 years. We created in 2018 the Institute for Business and Society because we witnessed all the tensions that are arising between society, the public, and business leaders. And we wanted to answer some of these questions. However, I think that the speed at which we're moving is a little bit slow. When I started in 2013 as Dean of INSEAD, issues like climate change, sustainability, and economic inequality were there, but they were definitely not on the front pages of newspapers. However, today the world is facing, as a result probably of ignoring this, incredible challenges. Challenges related to the environment and climate change, challenges related to the devastating war that we see in Ukraine, social cohesion, inequality, populism, challenges coming from the implications of new technology and the future of work. To really understand what it means for the future, for our future and your future, we need to go back in time and we need to draw some lessons from the past. 2,000 years ago, the average person did not have high levels of uh, consumption, basic food, basic shelter, clothing, and not much more. For 18 centuries, this did not change. Life expectancy was between 30 and 40 years, 2,000 years ago, and in the beginning of the 19th century. In fact, in the beginning of the 19th century, nine out of the 10 people living would be living in extreme poverty. Today, the expectancy has more than doubled. In many countries, it's over 80 years and income has increased 15 times from 1820, so 200 years of impressive growth. 
everything that we see today, all these microphones, TV, telephones, uh, uh, cars, planes, were created in the last 200 years. We're always fascinated by these technologies. And in my economics class, in the growth session, I talk about this a lot because we have to understand the drivers of growth. But we ignore the byproducts of this economic growth. Environmental damage is pervasive. And more importantly, we have to remember that in the 19th century, when the Industrial Revolution was fueling this growth, the conditions and problems that were created by this, none of the existing social, economic, or political systems could address. And therefore, political systems changed, liberal democracies were born, but with it also communism and fascism. Wars, revolution, famine, child labor were were everywhere. In fact, in the 19th century, the British Army fought in 34 wars all over the world. In 1848, Marx and Engels wrote the Communist Manifesto, which paved the way for very dictatorial regimes, uh, lived in one of those in the 20th century. Then we had two world wars, a Cold War, and so on. So today, when we think about the fourth industrial revolution, and we think about all the climate change and the challenges we're facing, it's not only that we have to solve what we have done in the past and do it better, but we have to preempt all these negative dynamics that are coming to us from the future. Let me quote from the third book of uh, Yuval Harari, 21st lesson, 21 Lessons for the 21st Century. So that's what he says, they are discussing basically the same topic. The challenge, posed to humankind in the 21st century by infotech and biotech is arguably much bigger than the challenge posed in the previous era by steam engines, electricity, and railroads. We cannot afford failed models. So this is why we have to start thinking today, and business has an important role to play in this, how do we prevent these negative dynamics? How do we prevent social tensions and unrest, and how do we move forward? So what we did at INSEAD in 2014, in my first year, we started talking about business being a force for good. Because we are here in order to ensure that you, as our alumni, our graduates, you go out there and you do something that all of us will be very proud of. When we talked about business as a force for good, it has two components, and it's very important to keep both of these in mind. The first one, is that economic growth lifts people out of poverty. In 1980, in China, there were 840 million people who lived in extreme poverty below $1.90 a day. Today, extreme poverty in China is eradicated. When you look globally, more than 1.5 billion people in this world have been lifted out of extreme poverty. This has never happened in the history of the world before. Completely unprecedented. And when you think, how did it happen? You realize that it happened because of one and only one thing, and that is economic growth. And the only engine of economic growth is business creation. Without business, without building factories, without organizing people to work, there is no growth, there is no eradication of poverty. So this is the narrow interpretation of business as a force for good, but it's not enough. Because even though business creates this miracle, because it is a miracle, Still, the public was very unhappy with, with what business leaders were doing, and the tensions were increasing. And we realized that today, in the process of value creation for your company, you have to think what is the value that you create for the society or the impact you have on the environment. And that is the broader interpretation of business as a force for good. We have to change our thinking and start incorporating this into our mindset and into our decisions. It is important also to understand that a lot of rules that we follow, a lot of things that we're used to are just social norms that we got used to and we accept as God-given truths. But they're not. There's things that will change and probably future generations will look back at us and say, how could they tolerate this? In the same way in which we'll look back in the early 1960s at INSEAD and we wonder how could they accept until 1967 only man to study at INSEAD, like in many other universities. So we have to figure out what are the norms that we need to change. We, 
the society, want business leaders who do not only create phenomenally successful companies, but also ones who, in this process, create value for the society and maximize their social impact. And we know the change is coming. We know that this will happen. But how fast it will happen will determine whether we'll observe these negative dynamics and these imbalances growing and leading to social cataclysms. So all of you have to play a role in this. So let me just ask you of one thing. As you join our incredible alumni community, spread in all continents, 176 countries, 65,000 people, I ask you to recognize the uniqueness of our school and its mission. If INSEAD is the business school for the world, I must ask each one of you to determine how you'll make INSEAD your own. How will you contribute to the mission of making business as a force for good? We're a different school. We're mission-driven. We're value-based. We want the world to admire you not only for what you have done for the bottom line of your company or creating very successful companies, but to admire you also for what you have done for society and for the environment, which is just a different way to say for what you have done for the future generations. Today is the beginning and not the end of your INSEAD journey. I'm asking you, each one of you, to become a true ambassador for INSEAD and for what we represent in this world. INSEAD is about inclusion, diversity, tolerance, friendship. Through your business and your future work, you can build a better world. So let me finish with this. I want us to continue to champion diversity because it is the key to strengthening individuals, businesses, institutions, and society. Let us promote peace and prosperity for every individual community and country in the world. We are proud that you chose to earn your MBA at INSEAD. I have no doubt that the class of 22D will change our world for the better and contribute much to the prominence of our school, which now you can call your own. The world is facing incredible challenges. You acquire the knowledge, the tools, the skills to turn these challenges into opportunities. You will be facing an uphill battle, but you have to win because you are in SEAT. You are not only alumni now, you are our partners in this magical journey called INSEAD. Congratulations, thank you, and good luck, MBA class of 22D. Thank you. Thank you very much, Cillian, for your inspiring words. And it is now my honor to introduce you to your distinguished alumni speaker, Roland Kruger, MBA 98J. Roland was appointed as Dyson's CEO and member of the board of Dyson Holding in April 2020. Before that, he was chief operating officer and joined Dyson in April 2019 as global president of automotive and executive director. Roland is a global executive with extensive design, engineering, and management experience. Prior to Dyson, he was the chairman and global president of Infinity Motor Company and corporate officer of Nissan. Roland also held a variety of senior executive roles with the BMW Group and design responsibilities at Smart and Mitsubishi. Throughout his career, he has worked in industrial design and engineering functions, as well as various executive roles in charge of running major businesses globally, regionally, and locally. He has designed the interior of the first smart car. Roland studied industrial uh, design at the University of Applied Science in Munich, Germany, and has an MBA from INSEAD. Born in Munich, Roland now lives in Singapore with his wife, who's also here, thank you. When Roland isn't in the office, he likes to compete in ultra sports. He's the first German 
to ski through Antarctica to the geographical South Pole solo and unsupported. Based on his achievements in polar exploration, he was appointed member of the Explorers Club in New York. Please help me welcome Roland back to INSEAD. Yeah.